When the rain hits my window, I take it <sighs> Me some, me and Timberland We sang a dangle We so tight that you get our styles tangled Sway your do si do like you loco Can we get pink at night like Coco? Can we get pink at night like Coco? Can we get pink at night? Can we get pink at night? By your sweet princess Zuka. Can we get pink at night like Coco? Like like Coco. Think about it before I bind in to continue talking about the dog, uh, the other Corvette driver I mentioned earlier in my article lecture today. Uh, let me let me make a little bit of a timeline here. Oh yes, I am your sweet princess Silka, intelligent I am. Sharing generously my wisdom. And all right, so April my birthday, remember? From April to September, I saw Paco. And the previous year I had worked at the Serventino from April to December, living in Roberto Parentes' apartment in Palenco. I took the job because he, he offered. He, he said, live in my apartment because he wasn't there. He lived in Miami. He would come, I don't know, once a month for a few days, for a week or so. Something, not regularly, but I don't know what his schedule were. He was attending business. He would work in Miami and in Mexico, the business he had with his brother. Remember, he's italo francese that means Italian and French. Who was born in Africa, he said. Yeah, I, I, mother French, because she lived in Paris. In a fancy neighborhood, he made clear I knew it when he left me sitting there for a day waiting for him. I don't know, it was the way he said it, where she lived. I understood it was fancy <laughs> because it was coming out of his mouth. I can tell you where, but it doesn't matter. Because I always think about it. I always think about it, or maybe I think about her in a way. Not because of her, but... Okay, so the one important thing in Paris to visit for me, which I actually fell in when I went the first time by myself, because I just started walking, and that is... The little mountain hill, which is, which is a little bit up, and there's a church, but the church is not mattering. I don't know if I ever went in. It's the, right around the corner, there are the artists, the painters on the street. Yeah, that little corner you can see in Woody Allen's movie, Midnight in Paris, where he buys the record. That's that, that's that, that's exactly what it is. So that starts with an M. And where his mother lives, starts with an M2, but it's in the south side of the city. I wouldn't be able to actually say that it is fancy or not, but it was how it came out of his, his mouth. So he was proud that his mother lived in that very place. And who gave him the idea? Well, his mom, right? One is called Montmartre, which is the place I like, up north, next to the station Gardinov. And the other one is called Montparnasse. Montmartre, Montparnasse. So often I, I pause, I say, which one was which? The name. So I think Montparnasse, Robert Parentes, mom. <laughs> okay, so he was attending the business which he had with his brother in common. Something with Italian furniture. So he would be doing the sales in, in Miami and also Mexico, and his brother would attend the factory. And his brother also had other businesses, like the Italian restaurant. And then he wanting to become associate to the other Italian restaurant, which was in Cuernavaca next to South. But instead he built a hotel right underneath his property with like eight rooms, a tiny one. Oh, he showed me proudly, his brother. Oh, uh, Mark, Mark Parente. Okay, so his name, last name is Parente from Italian. And in Mexico, he changed it to Pariente because this is Spanish. Which means like family member. 
so to work on the Serpentino from April to December, I was living in Robert's apartment in Palanco because it was close by a few minutes away by car. Yeah, maybe 15, but coming me from Cuernavaca where I lived like all the time, that was very short. Because of his apartment, I could actually take the job because it paid so very little. So as I work in the Cervantino, now the opera workshop starts. So for three weeks, I went to the opera workshop every day. I worked a few hours in the morning at the Cervantino and then I went to the opera workshop. And there were people, you know, who spoke French and English. Uh, the teachers came from all over the world, from the Metropolitan Opera and from other opera houses. So international, that's what it was, business. Yeah, and some came to visit, to make auditions, to, to catch Rolando Villasan. That's what we got there. Okay, so previous to that, now I can make timelines. The previous year I ended, finished my studies at La Ibero. And shortly after, I got a job. Okay, that year I sang at the cathedral, by the way, twice. Once I sang Handel and the other time I sang Bach as a soloist with Diana, Diana Jimenez, Sam Hayek's mom. And she put me up there and she said, you sing this and now you sing that. Yeah, one was in April or March during the Easter week and the other one was in December. That year I finished my studies. And shortly after I finished my studies, Pura Lopez called me. Yeah, the poet, a very famous poet, Pura Lopez called me. And she asked me if I could help her out because there was a job. It was an American couple when he was a filmmaker. They were filming a movie in Cuernavaca in the fancy uh, Camino Real of Cuernavaca. And they had children and a nana and they needed some tutor. And of course I took the job. So I would go drive all the way to the south to that very fancy hotel, which was next of course to the other new hotel I, I had been, the Eco Hotel. And this was just like an, an, an emblem of Cuernavaca. Cronovac had like two of those and then a few others. That was like the large emblem. Yeah, that's the kind of hotel you can actually go and crash at the pool if you know that it exists. <laughs> no one could know. <laughs> oh, which I did once. That was later. I, I took the kids though, that's why. Because it's also hard enough to take a dive in the pool. Yeah, and someone watched the kids and I, I took a jump into the water, always with my eyes open because I'm cool, and I lost my contact. So I didn't feel I could drive, so I had to call Pavarotti to pick me up. A weird story. Not only one day I did that. Because I look for her now, who gives a shit? I'm well behaved, I know how to, how to act. I'm respectful and responsible. Anyhow, so now I was driving to that very hotel. In, in one hotel room in the lower floor, there they were, large and very modern, very pretty. Yeah, Mexico knows how to handle hotels, really good at that. And I was tutoring a first grader, and she had a smaller sister. And did they invite me to the set? Somehow I think I saw it, but then again. The filmmaker and his wife from America, from New York. And then there was also the mother of him, maybe, or was it her? I think him, who came visit us, so the grandmother. And the nana, they also had a nana. So I was tutoring that one girl. One day I also brought them to Coyoacan. I asked them if that would be okay to get, get them to a field trip, to make a field trip with them. <laughs> and the small one, she was maybe three. Oh my God, she was so pretty. Oh my God, was she so pretty. I remember I was standing at Coyacan at La Plaza and I held her in my arms because she was so small. I don't know, I showed him a few things. And she looked at me and she told me in English, Silky, you're so soft, so soft. Can you believe it? That's what she said. Little three year old with Gordy Locks, man, she was so pretty, not blonde. Anyway, that lasted, I don't know, for a few weeks only, that job. Oh yeah, the filmmaker gave me a, a movie he had made. I watched it. I felt I had to throw up. Cards to the, it was horrible. 
so badly done, so boring and annoying. I said, what the heck? Then I looked at him again after I saw the movie and I had no respect for him as a person. I think he looked like, but that's hard to say. How do I explain it? Woody Allen, when he films movies in New York, they always have like interesting characters, right? Disturbed woman and disturbed man, and they're tall and they have like intrinsically large characters. But there's always one actor which is small and very blonde with glasses. I don't know if he's just a friend or if he's a doctor. Anyhow, it's like insignificant. And that is how this movie maker depicted itself to me. After that, I sang in December and then uh, Asa stopped paying and that's when I met Pavarotti. So in January I went to Cancun. Wow. For just a few days. Wait. No, I had met Pavarotti the year before. All right. I'm more confused. I don't feel well right now. I feel really not well. I'm forced to talk right now. Instead of waiting it out. No. Pavarotti was the year before. The year I sang. In January. Now this year, Cervantino, I had met Parente somewhere. Oh yeah, he went. He came to the concert in December. And in January... of the following year. I recapitulate. I worked at the Cervantino, met so very many people, international in October and after the workshop of the opera, which had been earlier in the year. I had a clash with parent and moved out. Well, he started to be weird or I can't talk about it right now. I already said it so often, but I will if I have to. I'm just gonna recapitulate right now. Palinto, he became sarcastic. When he was sarcastic, but now he became sarcastic with me in one of his visits. Oh my God, this is hard to focus. And I sort of kind of had it. He just arrived to Mexico. Instead of being harmonic, he was sarcastic. It's kind of yeah, pushing me away, or I don't know what that was. I can't really think about it right now. So I imitated him and then he was outraged because he could not fathom that somebody would do exactly what he did. I just imitated him, I mimicked him. And he couldn't handle, so he, he made a tantrum. So I left, and he said, yeah, I want my apartment back. I said, okay, and I packed my things and I left. And then he said, yeah, I want my keys back because he maybe thought I would not go because I was kind of dependent on him because of the damn job. So I gave him the keys and I left. He was completely flabbergasted that I had such strength of character. Although he always said it, that I have strength of character. He always said, you don't compromise, Silke. You're uncompromisable. You could be president. So I left. Yeah, and shortly after the doctor knocked on my door in, in, in Cuernavaca. What is the foundation Eric from? He asked. He was there with his son. And then he looked me into, you know, not subletting, but almost a little place in his house, which was half empty. I mean, it was stuffed with stuff, but it wasn't used. But then he became clingy and weird and obnoxious. And I left in December. And then Padente came back. I do not know if I met him at a party or if he actually called me, we went together. A weird party during Christmas, but it's like, okay, it's forgiven. And then in January he came visit and I don't remember, but I remember that I had no money and that he was not willing to give me any money. I mean, not even a hundred pesos, which is $10. He was making fun. Yeah, why don't you sing and cut hair? Ha <laughs> ha. Like the operas. I was so cruel. And I sent him a chingada in a way, but I didn't say a word. So in order to make up and get me in the, into his life, he invited me to Miami in February. 
because it was his birthday, I remember, because some dummy left a very long, like half an hour message in his answering machine, which he put very loud on as I was visiting him to show me that he was still going on with this and that. So I left him again and said, what the heck? So now it's April, it's my birthday, and I didn't invite him to my party. But Paco was there, I remember. So in May, Panetti came back. He had to figure out a way to get me to his life. So now he offered a Europe trip. Go visit your parents, he said. And then we meet in Paris. And then we went to Berlin. Yeah, in Paris, he left me totally alone, asshole again. Because he had to go visit his mother. The one day I'm there, I was alone, man. But then he said, well, where would you like to go? Let's go over the weekend somewhere. I didn't say a word. I should have said Florence or Venice. But he said, okay, let's go to Berlin. So we went to Berlin. It was horrible. So in somewhere in that very story, the dog came. For seven days or five days only. I was sitting with my friend. Well, let's say I visited my friend who was sitting with a lot of other girlfriends on the table. I don't know, she was always surrounded by people. And that was a rarity that I was out there. And then this guy comes. Matthew McConaughey, maybe, in a way. He looked like him. I wasn't interested in him. He was just there and she endorsed. He is new in the hometown. So I invited him to the concert. And then after the concert, which was a noon, a matinee maybe, a matinee, on a Sunday, he showed me the house he had inherited in the very south of Cornavaca, which was simplistic and boring, yeah, more like from the 50s or 60s. And a super hot climate, which I do not enjoy. Yeah, next to these nice hotels I just told you about. He did not have a swimming pool, at least I don't remember. But he had a large orchard. Or, or chart. He was bored, 45, retired, had made all the money. And then, I don't know what was happened. And then after that, I had to go maybe the next, I don't remember what came first, that I had to go to the city for something, which was rare. And he gave me the keys to his apartment. I just stepped in, made a phone call and left. I never came back. But in, in, in these seven days, he also said, let's visit my sister. Actually, he said, let's go eat in Tepoztlan. So his father would come from Mexico City and his sister, who had just moved into Tepoztlan, they just all made a move. We all three went to, well, we all four, they're three, and I went to the Los Ciruelos, which is like the only elegant, fancy restaurant. It's nothing as elegant in Tepoztlan. The most expensive one, because there's like the large patio and the view over the mountain. It's just Mexican food, just every, any other restaurant. But I could see the vanity of the father. He maybe was good looking once, some real dandy gigolo placing all the monetary values on on son and the daughter she was a dummy overweight who prided himself right herself right now to drive some i don't know what car that was but she was proud of it maybe jeep <coughs> sorry and now she was decorating her little apartment in tepostland style nothing fancy it was like the colors there and and we overnighted and as we overnighted for the only once and only time, first and last, we went to a restaurant, bar, which had live music, salsa. Well, the place maybe could have been okay, but they were like hippies. Nasty gang, I've never seen that before. Yeah, older guys, I mean older hippies, not 15, but maybe 30 now, 40. Intending to pick up tourists, it was disgusting. A scene I'd never seen. So we overnighted at her house, and I remember because we had this large breakfast we made together, also excited, and she talking about her food, and I thought so stupid. Yeah, that must have been the, the weekend before we went to Mexico City. I said seven days because it's seven days. I saw him, which maybe only were six, in a, a short amount of maybe two weeks, scattered, or I don't know. So what I just gave you, the entrance of, all what I had done, all the people I met, all the internationality, all the culture, all this and that. Now he comes this idiot who is rich but has no culture. How could I possibly be interested in him? Drop, tap, point, shot, will I sell it? Hell nah. Four wheels. 
controls, stress low, relax, take tracks in the console. Jeez, drive round of an endo, please keep that on the download. Well, I got no fancy features, fuzzy dice, couple speakers, radio, no receiver, gas light on, but I don't believe it. Road trips in a cappuccino, spill the coke, bag of Cheetos, and you gon' blow like a pack of C4, blown out smoke to the boy's steamboat. Big dreams, never sleep though, bag gon' hop like an El Camino, modified, my bitch illegal, parts come cheap down to Puerto Rico. Drop top beater, quarters in the meter, cranking up the heater. Cause the AC doesn't work Drop top beater Call could call me Peter Ask the pretty friend Sorry love I'm a two seater Drop top beater Drop top beater Drop top beater You trying to come nowhere? Cookie cops in the block Will I stop? Hell nah I got nothing lavish It's special about it I bought it Use my hundred thousand Overheat on summer evening She wanna title it Can't be salvaged Seven deep shit Super crowded Go A to B I don't do rerouting